In your strength, O Lord, the just one rejoices. How greatly your salvation makes him glad. You have granted him his soul's desire. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who brought St. Louis from the cares of earthly rule to the glory of a heavenly realm, grant, we pray, through his intercession, that by fulfilling our duties on earth, we may seek out your eternal kingdom through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. We ask you, brothers and sisters, with regard to the promise of our Lord Jesus Christ and our assembly with him, not to be taken out of your mind suddenly, or to be alarmed either by a spirit, or by an oral statement, or by a letter allegedly from us, to the effect that the day of the Lord is at hand. Let no one deceive you in any way. To this end, he has also called you through our gospel to possess the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold fast to the tradition that you were taught, either by an oral statement or by a letter of ours. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who has loved us and given us everlasting encouragement and good hope through his grace, encourage your heart and strengthen them in every good deed and word. The word of the Lord. The Lord comes to judge the earth. The Lord comes to judge the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He has made the world firm, not to be moved. He governs the people with equity. The Lord comes to judge the earth. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea and the children be dumb. Let the plain be joyful and all that is in them. Then shall all the trees of the forest exult. Before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to rule the earth. He shall rule the world with justice and the people with his constancy. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said, 
Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You pay tithes of mint and dill and cumin, and have neglected the weightier things of the law, judgment and mercy and fidelity. But these you should have done without neglecting the others, blind guides who strain out the gnat and swallow the camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You cleanse the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of plunder and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee, cleanse first the inside of the cup, so that the outside also may be clean. The Gospel of the Lord. So today we celebrate the memorial of St. Louis. And so, so we're talking St. Louis, he, he would be Louis the Ninth in France during the 13th century. And he was a king who, if, you know, if you listen to the opening collect we pray that, that the church has given us for today's memorial, you'll notice a theme of justice. And then that's not, it's not surprising that the church would give that opening collect for him a theme of justice because he certainly was a justice king. Certainly a breath of fresh air in terms of that in comparison to the previous two reigns that came before him. And so when he came in as king, I mean, you finally had a certain amount of just kind of um, peace and calm within France's borders and also much more of an emphasis on justice for the poor uh, and also in terms of the court system. So, for example, he enacted reforms within the justice system, the courts where that had um, in areas of determining guilt or innocence. He also established a lot of hospitals. And in, in addition to that, he just put a major emphasis on outreach to the poor in terms of other big fundamental needs like food, for example. So he engaged in a lot of feeding of the poor at, you know, at the palace. He, uh, especially during Lent and Advent, anybody who showed up for a meal could get one. And um, he would also invite 13 poor people every night to dine with him. And so he was a real, a real justice-oriented king, and particularly compared to the previous two reigns that had been very, uh, much more violent and full of conflict in France. And one of the things people really attributed this refreshing change, its emphasis on justice for St. Louis, was that he actually took the religious aspect of being king very seriously, far less so than had been done by previous kings who had much much more of kind of a secular way about way about it and so it's one thing I really like about st. Louis because we tend to think of okay people who, who are interested in you know peace and justice issues uh, they're over there we call them you know social justice warriors sometimes and then the people who are interested you know the leaders who are interested in religious concerns they're, they're not that they're, they're something over here and with St. Louis, we see, no, those things should not be set apart. And in fact, the, the importance that he placed on the faith and the religious aspect of his leadership role was key to being so successful in these different aspects of justice in terms of his leadership. Now, in today's gospel, we see Jesus criticizing the scribes and Pharisees who occupy a certain kind of leadership role in their society. And he's, he's criticizing them for basically giving kind of superficial honor to religion, superficial honor to the law. You know, you pay tithes of mint and dill and cumin, and yet you neglect the, way, neglect the weightier things of the law. So in terms of, you know, basic substance that comes with that, that comes with that sort of honor, outward honor you're giving to religion, there, there's no substance there. And certainly, I mean, I think we, we all know there are plenty of leaders in our own time who might give some kind of lip service to the importance of religion, but there's just not a lot of substance there. Indeed, we have a lot of leaders who don't really get the, in terms of the laws they enact, they don't really get the importance of religion and the importance of spiritual health for the people they're leading. So today on this memorial, let's really draw comfort and consolation from the fact that we had St. Louis and that there actually have been leaders who really take religion seriously and, allow, and 
are a lot, enable that taking of religion seriously to bring in about a great or a new era of peace and justice. We can certainly have something like that in our own day. And especially during this time when we're all, everyone's thinking about voting and elections are, you know, coming up and all that. Let's really uh, take the, make this an occasion to reaffirm our, our responsibility to hold our own elected officials accountable for taking religion seriously and the spiritual health of the people they lead seriously so that we can have enact a true greater era of peace and justice in our own time, all ordered toward our Lord in heaven. Heavenly Father, trusting in your divine providence, we now bring forward our petitions. For all of us as Christians, that we be a people who truly champion matters of peace and justice, especially outreach to the poor, but in a way that is, root, that is not secular, but rooted in our faith and ultimately our service to our Lord. We pray to the Lord. For all of our church leaders, that they be guided by, um, by justice, also prudence, and in general, the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. For this time of elections, for us as Christians, that we discern in a faithful way about uh, being active members of the political process, we pray to the Lord. And for Claire Keefe, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, we entrust these prayers to your loving care through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the present oblation, O Lord, which we offer in commemoration of blessed St. Louis, Bestow on your faithful, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you are praised in the company of your saints, and in crowning their merits you crown your own gifts. 
By their way of life, you offer us an example. By communion with them, you give us companionship. By their intercession, sure support, so that, encouraged by so great a cloud of witnesses, we may run as victors in the race before us and win with them the imperishable crown of glory through Christ our Lord. And so, with the angels and archangels, with the great multitude of the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you've created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and Recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with St. Louis, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Andrew our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father. Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
at the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. So I'm going to distribute communion now. Since I'm the only priest here to distribute communion, I would like to distribute to those who would like to receive in the hand first, and then I'll distribute to those who would like to receive on the tongue. After that, I'll come back and finish Mass. So right now, for those who, anybody who would like to receive communion in the hand only, please form a line right here, minding your social distancing.
My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given you besides, says the Lord. Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received, O Lord, in commemoration of blessed St. Louis, sanctify our minds and hearts, that we may merit to be made sharers in the divine nature through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.